Hi, my name is Steve James, and I'm the teacher and author of the class and book on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 465. God is not a respecter of persons. All right, well, take your Bibles and go to Romans chapter 2. Hey, last week we got into spiritual things. We got into God does, does not want us to be ignorant, but he wants us to know the score. And we learned that we can operate spiritual things in our lives in two main ways. One is by the manifestations. There's nine manifestations, no more, no less. Nine manifestations. And also ways of service, service to others. Sometimes in the Bible, it's called good works, service to others, good works. And it's like, you know, if, uh, if I prayed or if one of us would pray for a car, we need a car, and God would give us the car, right? And so now we got this blessing from God. We got a car, and then I could decide to use that car to help others. I could give believers a ride to work. I could give them a ride to fellowship. I could help them with their groceries and things, and this would be good works, right? Good things we're doing, that service to others, all because I had a need, I prayed and believed. Well, that's how it is. We have many things that we can do with that once we got born again. We have access to God. We ask God for help. We get the help. And then we can even do things sometimes called good works to help other people. But the good works do not get us eternal life. They don't give us It doesn't really do anything for us except we get the blessing of utilizing those good works. Because to get born again, to be to get receive Holy Spirit is is all by the grace of God. We've got the grace of God, but we can use things that we receive from God to help others, to bless others. Sometimes in the Bible, you'll see as we go through it, called good works. So in Romans chapter 2, 10, it says, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jews first, and also to the Gentiles. For there is no respecter of persons with God. And that's the title of this teaching. Last week, we saw that we were members in particular of that one body, the body of Christ. And there, and we're all needed. You know, we can't say that the eye is not needed or the foot, right? Remember that? So, and if you're of the Judean background or if you're of everyone else, once you believe it, you get it. And then God is no respecter of persons. Look at Acts. Go back a book. Look at Acts chapter 10. And we're going to go to verse 34. And it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. We all are important to God, we all get it by the grace of God, and we all can be of help to one another by means of manifestations or services to others, right? Let's look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 6. I'm really trying to develop that God is no respecter of persons. And the reason I know this is because we're reading. We're seeing it right in the word. In verse 6 of chapter 2, it says, But of 
these who seemed to be somewhat. Whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepts no man's person. See, we're all equal in God's eyes. For they who seem to be somewhat, Paul goes on, in conference added nothing to me. Just because you go, hey, I'm Dr. So-and-so or Reverend So-and-so or I run this ministry or whatever, makes no difference to God. There is no hierarchy. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and we are members in particular. We all have our own long suits, our own likes and dislikes, and we're all important to God, and that's what I'm going to show you here this morning. And I think I want you to see this. God doesn't look at anyone's person, but what he looks at is the heart and believing. That's what he looks at. Two things. Heart. God always looks on our hearts. He knows what we are like, what we want, and what we're doing, and believe. Because if we believe the word, we get the results of that believing. And if we don't believe the word, we get the results of that unbelief. So that's why we spend time looking at God's word so we can see the word and do the word. Look at Romans chapter 10. And we're going to see how important the heart is. And in verse 8 is where I want to start. And it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy what? Heart. God looks at the heart. That is the word of believing. See, believing once again. Those two things are very important in a believer's life which we preach. In other words, Paul was preaching. Others have preached. It's written in God's word. We believe the word. We will receive the promises of the word. And verse 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You know what confess means? Simply, it means say it. Say it. Say it. Confess. With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, be made whole. This verse and the, the ones following it are so vitally important to believers that we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? Because of all that he did for us, how he laid down his life for us, and because he did that, God highly exalted him and made him head of the church. He's our Lord. So we confess him as Lord in our lives, right? Shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. That's what we have to believe. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Once we've done that, we've got it. It's by grace. There is no works that anyone needs to do to, to receive favor from God. God has already favored us in Christ Jesus because what of Jesus Christ did. And there's nobody better than anyone else. Nobody's better than anyone else. I'm going to read some more of this chapter because it's a good chapter. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. We're going to be blessed with the results of who we are and what we have in Christ. It's pretty neat. And verse 11 says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord 
over all is rich unto some of the people. Well, the people who will go where I fellowship, right? All that call upon you. See, that, that's what I'm really trying to do, show here. There is no hierarchy. We just have different functions, different things that we do. That's all. And everything that we do is good. Because that's what God gave us to do. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you live in the right countries. No, nothing. No, there's no buts. Whoever confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, you got it. It's pretty neat. Let's jump down to verse 17. So then, faith or believing cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need the Bible. We read the Bible, we study it, and then we go, all right. I can get born again. Getting born again, in a way, is one of the easiest things you can do in your life. You hear the word, you go, yeah, I believe Jesus did that. I believe it. Yeah, do you believe God raised him from the dead? Well, yeah, I can believe that. You know? And then you get born again. It's the greatest thing, getting born again. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Just a page away in my Bible. And I'm going to start in verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me. We all got the grace, by the way. Once you're born again, it's by grace, right? The grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But... To think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith or belief. We, ha we have the same opportunity to believe the same things because we have the same word of God. And we can believe it. And God says, don't think too highly of yourself. Well, I'm the leader. This is my church. This is my group. No, don't think of yourself too highly. And so we don't do that. We humbly go before God in our prayer life and other things. Then verse 4 says, For as we have many members in one body, and we looked at that last week in detail, right? And all the members have not the same office or the same function. You know what that means? That word talks about that we all don't do the same thing. We all have stuff that we're good at. And one of us could pray for a car and get it, right? And then they could help people out with that car. And so they would be doing good works. You see that? But we have nine manifestations. We have services, ways that we can serve others, and we can pray and ask God to help us with that, and then we can use that to help others, and that's the good works. It's fairly simple, huh? So let's go to verse 5. It says, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Then having and then gifts or ways of service differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the portion of what? Believing. Remember, God looks at the heart and believing. Or ministering, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. Some people are just really good at building people up. And they do it all the time. That's a good work to the body of Christ. All these things are, by the way. He that giveth 
let him do it with simplicity. And he that ruleth with diligence. If someone's put in charge of something, you know, or whatever, he does it diligently. He watches over to make sure it happens. Is that guy because he ruleth better than anyone else? No, not at all. He's got a job to do, and I'm thankful that that person's doing it. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. I want to stop here and just think for a second. When I was uh, a couple of years into the ministry and studying and learning God's word, I decided in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'm either going to help the ministry, help the movement of God's word by business, by doing business and to help support the work of the ministry. I was a, I was a contractor and I was pretty good at it. So that was a thought that I had. I also had another thought that I might like to go into the ministry. I might want to do some of that stuff. And at the point, after I finished the advanced class, okay, advanced class where we got into the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, I decided I wanted to get into the ministry. And so I applied and I went to a Bible college. I graduated. And after I graduated, I started teaching the Bible many times a week. I was going to say weekly, but many times a week. Taught more than one fellowship a week. Taught the word and taught the word. And then somehow along the way, I figured out my service to the body of believers is one of a teacher. Because I teach all the time. And it's just became part of what I do. And I'm still doing it. And I don't know when I'll stop because it's still a burning flame in my heart to continue to teach. But everyone has their own thing that they can do for the body of Christ. And if you don't know what it is, ask God. Or, you know, really, that's how you find out. And you start doing things and you'll find out about it. Remember last week we saw there was one group of people called helps, helpers, and other things. But I'm going to continue reading here. In verse 9 it says, let love be without dissimulation. What that means is partiality. See, you guys are all believers with Christ within you. You have Holy Spirit. You've got it all. You have the same measure as I do. There is no reason for me to think inferior of any other believer. And hoard that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another. So whenever I see someone who I know is born again, that he's a Christian, I have this affection for him. And I don't say, well, here's one layer and here's another layer. No. Anyone who's born again has got it. With brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. In other words, I'd rather hang out with the believers than the unbelievers who don't love God and don't think about serving others or, or anything else. You know what I mean? I'd rather hang out with believers. Verse 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing, instant in prayer. You know what instant means? We have instant coffee. It means like someone calls me up and says, will you pray for this or that? I say, when I get time, I no, I don't do that. I say, okay. Let's pray together. And some of you might have called me, and lots of times they'll say, let's pray. Let's pray together. That's something I do because it's in the Word. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. You know what they would call that in some places in God's Word? Good works. Given to hospitality. You know what that is? 
you knock on my door and I say, come in. What do you need? What can I do for you? Are you hungry? You need something to drink? Need to, you know, what can I do? Hosp you know, we all know what it means to be hospitable to people, right? Well, that's what we are to one another. Someone calls and says, hey, can you take care of this or help me with this or that? If I can do it, I do it. If I'm in the middle of something, I got to figure it out which is the most important thing to do, but it's all to, to be inhospitable. Come on in and sit down. No one has ever came here and has said to me, Steve, can I hang out here for a while? And I said, no. I'm watching the ball game. I never say that because it talks about it here in the Word. Bless them which persecute you and bless and curse not. How can I have a mindset that I'll bless those that curse me? And a believer, someone who's got Christ within them, needs something, and I am not him. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. Come on in. Well, what if they belong to another group than ours? Who cares? If they come and, and we can help them, we help them. Simple as that. If they're born again, they have Holy Spirit. Man, they're just like us. Let's go somewhere else in the Bible. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. For the life of me, I do not know why believers would put another group of believers in another position less than ours. I don't know why they do that. If they don't want to fellowship with us, that's another story. Well, let's just see what it says here in chapter 5, verse 1. It says, therefore, being justified by faith or believing, okay? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not just us. It's all that do this. By whom also we have access by believing unto this grace. This grace means favor. We didn't earn it. So why am I going to judge someone else as if they didn't earn it? Well, none of us earned it. Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Sometimes in life, we're going to have some opportunities and problems. Well, we take care of that stuff with patience, praying and knowing that God's going to help us. And patience, experience, and experience hope. We finally get what we need. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's shed abroad. There's other translations that says it floods our heart. It floods our heart. We become more loving as soon as we get born again and we start reading the word. We become more like Christ. We become more hospitable. We become that way. It's our nature. It almost comes to the point that we cannot be rude because it would seem impugnant to us. You know what I mean? It would, we'd have to say, well, come on in a little bit. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? We just couldn't be rude. It, it's just not our nature. We got a new nature, one of love. So that's just who we are. We can't help it. We're going to be that way. Verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's me. You know, at one time, Christ, he didn't wait for me to become good enough. He didn't wait for my heart to change on its own. 
and be hospitable and be nice. He didn't wait for that. It says here, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. I guess Secret Service would take the bullet for the president. I don't know anyone else, really. Yeah. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were stinkers, Christ died for us. So how could I be mean or rude to someone else who Christ died for? You know, who Christ laid down his life for? That, that almost doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Hey, we would do uh, better for the unbeliever at times. Verse 9 goes on and says, Much more than being now justified by his blood. Whenever you see by his blood in Romans particularly, it's talking about everything that Jesus Christ went through, not just his blood, his beatings, his sacrifice on the cross, his giving of his life. It's not just his blood, you know. He didn't just prick his finger. He went through horrendous time. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, made whole by his life. Hey, when we were enemies, this is what God did for us. Now we need something. We go to God in prayer. What's he going to do for us? Well, this is what he did when we were enemies. Now that we're his sons, isn't he freely going to give us all things? That's what it says in Romans further down, right? Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement, or that we're now at one with, with Christ. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We got it all. It's pretty cool. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians. Some people say it's the Breakfast of Champions. I agree. <laughs> it's a good book to start with. There's a whole lots of good books in the Bible, though. Verse chapter two, verse one. We're going to read this. It says, "And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins." That's like we're the enemy. You know, we are dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in times past we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You know, those guys. Among whom also we all, all of us, had our conversations in times past. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilled the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So those that aren't born again, that's what they were. But he's also mentioning here, we were right there with them. We were just like them. But I love this verse. I mean, this is the greatest thing. I got it underlined in my Bible. But God. But God, who is rich in mercy. In other words, he's holding back what we deserve, right? For his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead to, in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. 
by grace we were saved. By grace, favor. We didn't earn it. Jesus Christ earned it for us. That's why we love him so much. That's why we teach it so much. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches of his grace. As time goes on in the next administrations, we're going to see the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through believing. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And uh, remember I was saying, service sometimes is called good works in the Bible, but that's not how you get saved. We get saved when we were enemies, when we were dead in trespasses and sins. That's why we should never look down on any other person who's in the same position. Verse 9 says, not of works, lest any man should boast. I could say, you know, look at me. We can never say, look at me. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See, we prayed for a car, we got it, and now we can help others with that car. Whatever God gives us, we can help others with it. That's the good works. Do we get any, any extra Holy Spirit for those good works? No. Jesus Christ did all the work. We have the blessing of doing it, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called by the uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the, in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. This is the way we were, but when Jesus Christ accomplish it for us that both Jew and Gentile can get born again. We can read the word, believe the word, and receive it by grace. We're now, we're no longer without God, without hope. We got it now. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath broken, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. We got it, having it abolished in his flesh, the enmity, or this time this word enmity is sometimes translated as hostility, and even some places hatred. Hatred. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain two, one new man, so make in peace. That one new man is the body of Christ and us. We are now there. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross the body of Christ, the church, having slain the enmity whereby, when we didn't like one another, now we're supposed to like one another, and came and preached peace to you that were afar off, and to them that would not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We have access to God. 
we have wonderful access to God by the spirit we, we receive when we're born again. And then we can learn how to utilize that spirit because the, the records in God's word tell us how to do that. And that's what we're going to get into next in our fellowships here. We're going we're gonna to manifest Holy Spirit. We're going to have power in life. Verse 19 is one of my favorite verses. It says, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Before we were, we were of this world who is run by the adversary. Now we are of the kingdom of God. We're, we're, not, we're no more strangers or foreigners, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We now are part of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. This is talking about all the believers receiving Holy Spirit and becoming part of that one body. We're, we're fitly framed together, and we grow into a holy temple of the Lord. We are God's dwelling place. We now have Holy Spirit. We're now God's dwelling place, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God. That's you have you inhabit where you live. We are now part of that God. God lives within us. It's God in Christ in us. Of God through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. See, being members in particular, being those who have Holy Spirit within them, we are part of that one body, the family of God, and we're members in particular, and we all have something that we can do. And you know what it is, and if you don't, you can find out just by getting involved and asking God. It's like me at that time. One time I thought, well, I'm just going to be a businessman and support the ministry until thinking, you know what? I got to be part of the ministry itself and decided to go get the training I needed to be able to do it, and I haven't stopped. And you were, were all the same. There's no hierarchy. Any group that says there is, I, I don't know if I can hang out with them, <laughs> but we're all members in particular. The Bible says it, and it says it here that I read today, and it says it in more places. I have more scriptures I could have brought you to that say the same thing. I'm Reverend Steve Janes, and I have more to give. On my website, I have biblical research classes, teachings, online biblical workshops, Christian podcasts, and biblical studies books, all to help you to continue to learn how to read your Bible, freely avail yourself to as much or as little as you need to live the life that Jesus Christ came to make available to you, the more abundant life. The link to the website is on the show notes below. Subscribe to the podcast to continue to hear great, accurate teachings that will help you to understand the Bible, which is God's Word. Please give me a good rating and tell others about this podcast. Until next time, may you have a more abundant life.